Hi again, Pierre in the garage. Uh, welcome back, it's been a while. Uh, even some viewers just uh, expressed some worries about <laughs> why, why was it so long without uh, any, any videos put up, but uh, the reason for that is uh, kind of been very, very busy for, uh, you know, daily, uh, daily chores and daily, uh, daily work. Plus also uh, going to the last stretch for the uh, the knurling tool that we're producing, Philip, uh, Philip, Robert, and Colin, for the uh, toolbox giveaway. Uh, this is, you know, coming to an end soon. Uh, parts are coming out of heat treatment and uh, almost ready for uh, assembling, and uh, you know, just like the last steps. Uh, today's video is uh, kind of simple, like these uh, screw that, uh, that are used for. Uh, maintaining pressure, which I'll, go, I'll give you some better close-ups on that. Uh, they're going to be done on the rotary, rotary head and installed on the uh, milling machine. So all the, the, all the, uh, the circle and the uh, hexagonal part and everything going to be done uh, kind of, I think, uh, kind of efficient, efficiently. And uh, let's go and let's see what uh, we come up with. Let's go to the machine. As a last operation on the um, where the blank is at now, I need to make the shoulder uh, measurement there. I'll eyeball it. I need uh, four inches of clear tread. So let's go to four inches. There we go. And uh, we're cutting and we'll be going a little bit under minor diameter. And make it long enough so we can operate easy. We want to chamfer this, uh, make an easier entry on the screw. There we go. A little bit of filing. And believe me, you don't want to cut this little uh, trunnion there with the, uh, you know, uh, parting tool. Mostly when it's between points like that or whatever. I mean, it's at your own risk, but most of the time uh, the screw there will climb on the tool and the whole thing will get crooked. And now, cutting them to length, removing the uh, center point on them. Just using uh, aluminum so soft jaws in the vise and a good old grinder. We'll have to do a little bit of dressing, cleaning the ends with the bench grinder, using the side of the wheel a little bit. I'm not exactly uh, using it very often, even the usually not recommended to see to use the side of the wheels. But if we do all that's recommended, we get nowhere. And very light grinding. Oops. Better. Okay, basic operation to start with. I've centered ahead using the X and Y uh, method and touching on one side, touching on the other side, and just dividing uh, by two and standing uh, in the middle after that. That's a brand new 716th end mill. I will start just rounding up the parts all over and then we'll start shaping the uh, the hexagon. So let's get on with it. Okay, if you remember that chuck that I used on the rotary head that had you know like 15 thousandths of a run out, 
uh, made the body the chuck or for uh, run out of about five thousandths now uh, I got left to grind the uh, the jaws but not gonna do that now I'm going to use it to hold these uh, screws and make the hexagonal head on it the two washers there they're used to sacrificial because I'm going to turn use the uh, rotary head and the uh, the milling machine to ro to uh, turn the uh, the heads on this so let's see how because I kind of tried it before with a little piece of paper here how low I can you know get that five uh, thousand to run out you know as low as possible let me just get this pressure done okay let's see from zero here and let's rotate the head I'm getting about uh, let's say two thousand to run up which is in this application very acceptable let's start shaping an hexagon on this and uh, you know like a, a bolt head okay we're getting closer to finish those bolts uh, this is one of the blanks I made I got washers there these washers are uh, to avoid me from uh, biting into the uh, the jaws uh, because I need to make the uh, part on top there cylindrical down to the uh, you know the, the most the, the downwards part of the uh, the head so this little piece of paper uh, is to compensate for the run out on the on the truck it's got about five thousand to run out and with this piece of paper it brings uh, one and a half maybe so this would run out on this S and uh, the milling table and everything's been aligned with the XY method. Uh, I had everything zero down on the uh, DRO. This, you know, now we see the uh, zero for the uh, the height, but uh, I'm close to the distance to the first diameter. The first diameter has to be like 577. The included circle, the included circle, you had to make uh, an hexagon with. Uh, you know, 500 uh, thousandths on each side, half inch. So, we'll round this down. You know, get the uh, the head down a little bit, 150 thousandths. Make the show the uh, that will give me the shoulder to uh, the boat, and we'll make the six sides. So let's get at it. We're running about 1,200 RPMs. It's a carbide end mill. This carbide end mill is 716. Uh, I'll get my uh, X position because I'm going to be grinding on this side there. So I'll get my X position to the air, you know, exactly where I need it to have a, an 877, uh, 577 diameter on this. So I need to be 506 and I'll lock the table. Okay, 5061, going to be good enough. This is tight. It's not dangerous like uh, in the late. If you leave it there, if you can run, if you can run the handle fast enough to uh, injure yourself, I mean, you're good. And I'm gonna move this out of there. I'll put this axis zero axis. Let's make this lined up with the zero axis of this. Oops. Half thousandths good enough. And let's turn the head. Uh, there we go. We're kind of milling. A nice round uh, surface on this. Ooh, we don't need too much of a spring pass. Let's get this out of there. Now we're going ready for the um, 
six sides and uh, let's move this out of the way a little bit and we gotta get the table down 150 thousands the shoulder will be so going this down 150 thousand and you gotta come back up take the slack on the uh, there we go and uh, making our first Okay, we'll put this to zero, and I'm doing a visual on this. And trust me, it works. Even if you don't trust me, it's going to work anyhow. Okay, and let's give it a little bit of air. Just air will help uh, getting rid of the chips. Okay, the next diameter is 465. That's going to be what we need to. Uh oh, the other direction. Right. 465. And we'll lock the table once we're there. 465 and one or two tenths. Good enough. One serious pass, one spring pass. Super nice, 60 degrees. Next. A few passes. 120 degrees. Hundred and eighty degrees. Lock the head, don't forget, because you're going to have a funny shape. And with carbide, you just run in. You don't hesitate. You just go at it, because otherwise you burn the, uh, you burn the uh, inserts of the, mil the mills. Uh, 240 degrees. And 300 degrees. There we go. This is done. Let's check this out. I think it's perfect. Wow. <laughs> I'm not surprised. I'm just amazed. Got the air on this. Next one. I'll give you uh, better close-ups, but it's nice. Second one done. Uh, last operation. Just make them... Uh, even on the top now, as far as length is concerned, we're uh, topping them off. There we 
we go. It's supposed to be. <clears throat> supposed to be four hundred thousand on top of this. Hey, that's good. She ain't pretty, but she's good. <laughs> <laughs> 